Hello everybody, this is 10th Doctor Matt with the much-anticipated review for the 10th Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver Universal Remote. So, let's get started straight away. So, this is the outer box that it comes in. You can see you got a nice uh, shot of the extended screwdriver on the top. On the front side there, you've got just a little uh, picture of David Tennant. Some instructions on the bottom. Doctor Who classic logo on either end, and uh, just a little bit of information about it on this side here. So once you crack into the package, this is a nice case that's inside, with a little bit of uh, engraving there of the screwdriver, which is pretty cool. Pop this open. You've got the screwdriver. This is your charging cable, which plugs into any old USB outlet, iPhone charger, or computer, etc. Take the screwdriver out. And this stuff is pretty cool. It's kind of like a nice foam. Um, underneath this side, you've got your instruction booklet, which on one side has a pretty cool kind of uh, x ray with some. Uh, cool little bits and then on the other side are the actual instructions so um, I have the 11th doctor's universal remote also and I'll say right now that the instructions for this one are way easier to read they're way less intimidating and confusing looking the 11th one just the layout is kind of strange and kind of difficult to get through and on the other side You've got this cool display stand that it's pretty hefty uh, metal. It's got some Gallifreyan on there. And the way that it displays, there's a magnet in there. So when you put this near there, it just sucks it right in. And that's how it displays, which is pretty cool. All right, so first things first, let's talk about screen accuracy. Um, this is easily the most accurate screwdriver prop available. Um, apparently what the wand company did when they made this was that they um, took the more recent um, iteration of David's screwdriver, because actually I guess at the beginning of his tenure he had kind of Christopher Eccleston's one and that one was a bit different. The um, slider button, or slider itself rather, was larger and kind of bulkier and didn't look quite the same. And so after he stuck it in the MRI machine and blew it up, um, they came to this iteration, and so that's the one that the WAN company did their scans of, and so that is what you get. So if you put it side by side with the toy version, you can see it's quite a bit smaller, and probably most notably, the button is on the slider without having to do any sort of sort of dodgy modification like I've done <laughs> with this, but we'll get to that in another video. Uh, so if we extend them both to give you the full effect, you can really see total size difference there. And you can see that the um, cables on the inside are the gold color that they are supposed to be, not this weird black helix stuff. And it clicks into place when you close it, which is nice. So let's get rid of that. Uh, as far as what it's made of, this uh, stuff here is plastic, but these sections are actually metal. Um, I believe it's aluminum because it's pretty light. Um, and you can see the top is rounded properly. It's not like kind of flat like this one is. And the bottom cap does snap off and that is where you plug in your USB cable to charge it. But it takes a bit of force to take it off so like this isn't going to fall off while it's in your pocket or anything. So on screen accuracy alone I definitely give this a 5 out of 5. I mean it's awesome. Um, it looks perfect 
And I actually, um, even like when I was at a uh, convention recently and like taking photos and stuff, uh, a lot of people actually commented on this. Um, they're wondering what it was, and, you know, where I got it and that sort of thing, uh, just because it looks like the real thing, which is pretty cool. So um, kind of continuing on the screen accuracy part, um, we can talk a bit about FX mode, which is basically what turns this into just a prop rather than a remote control. So when you first turn it on, you just have to hold the button down. So um, by default, it starts out in control mode. And so you just have to kind of give a short click to the button, one, one click to change modes. And I'm just going to extend it so you can kind of hear it a little bit better. So with one click, quiet control mode, which is uh, exactly what you'd expect. So it's control mode, but just without the sound effects. Then you get to FX mode, um, which is the prop mode. Um, there's, a, there's one other mode called practice mode, which basically puts it in control mode and it's just so you can practice doing um, the various gestures uh, before you try to program it. And so just so you can kind of get used to using it. All right, so in FX mode, um, if you just hold the button down, you get your uh, general sonic noise. If you uh, do a quick click and then hold it down on the second press, you can then do a gesture and it'll make a different sound. So for instance, uh, you know, if you tap on the right side, so if we go click, hold, tap, you get scanning mode which is kind of cool. Um, and so there are 13 different gestures that you can do. So there's a whole bunch of different sounds and all of those actually are um, laid out in the instruction booklet. And they kind of, you know, tell you what all the different things do and the different sounds that they make and that sort of stuff. So actually right here, um, it tells you what each gesture, uh, which sound it produces. So we can try a couple of these. Let's see. So, uh, flick down is broken sonic, so let's see what that sounds like. That's pretty cool. So, anyway, so there's a bunch of different sounds you can do. All of them sound um, quite a bit better than the toy. And uh, it's pretty cool, especially like the scanning modes and stuff. So you can be like, you know, looking for some Vash Narada or something, which is pretty neat. So, um, and the nice thing about FX mode is that it only uses battery power when you're actively using it. So like right now, it's not using any battery power. Whereas when it's in control mode, it's using a little bit of battery power the entire time. Uh, after 30 minutes of inactivity, it'll shut itself off. So that's kind of a nice feature. Um, but if you are in control mode, you can shut it off um, by just holding the button down again. Um, obviously that doesn't work in FX mode because that'll just do this. Um, but if we do a quick click, then we're back to practice mode, back to control mode. So now if I hold the button down, it says goodbye and there it goes. So uh, I'll just kind of reiterate, screen accuracy, five out of five, uh, FX mode included with all the different sound effects and light effects and stuff that you get out of it. It's pretty cool. So we can talk a little bit about control mode and actually programming it and using it as a universal remote. Um, I will say that actually doing the gestures on this and getting it to read correctly which gesture you're trying to do is way better on this one than the 11th universal remote. Um, for me, you know, I have the 11th one um, from when I bought the box set of, of seasons, you know, one through seven on Blu-ray. It came with the remote, which was pretty awesome. Um, but, you know, it's basically just sitting in the display case that it came in because it's really actually kind of difficult to use. Um, but this one works nicely. Um, it's very easy to program um, and it's really easy to use. Uh, so to enter programming mode, you have to do two quick presses and then hold the third one. So click, click, hold. So it enters programming mode and it says memory bank A. There are three memory banks. So uh, effectively you could have this programmed for three different remotes. Um, and then when you enter control mode, you can switch 
between the different memory banks depending on what you're trying to do. Um, so while it's in programming mode, this will blink every couple of seconds. So to actually program the thing is actually really easy. Um, all you have to do when it's in programming mode is just perform one of the gestures. Um, so the one I'll use for an example is a double button press. Um, and the reason that is you can't do a single one because that is just changes between modes, but you can do a double press. So just do press press. It'll say the gesture, the light will go on, and you just press whatever button on your remote that you want that to be programmed to. When it gets it, it says OK. So now if I uh, point this at my TV and do a double button press, it will power it on and off. So in terms of uh, like ease of programming and actual usability as a universal remote, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 because it's pretty awesome. Um, and it's nice because you can just kind of have it sitting on that display stand next to your TV and just kind of grab it off of there and, and go. And it, it's pretty, um, pretty impressive, really, that they could pack all of that into such a small device. So uh, we can quickly talk about price uh, because this is obviously quite a bit more expensive than the toy version. Um, so, you know, generally the toy is, I believe, around, you know, between $20 and $25, generally speaking. But you figure if you want this thing to be accurate, or at least semi-accurate, um, you're going to spend, uh, at least like for me, it was quite a few hours of painstaking work to try and modify this to get the button on the slider and as you can see it's it's there but it's not quite pretty um, this thing is an annoyance you know that this is what it's supposed to look like so I didn't even bother dealing with that you know gluing the cap into place to, it just just taking this apart to modify it took forever so 20 to 25 bucks and probably at least five hours of headache and hair pulling out for the toy version. For the Universal Remote, um, these are on Amazon. The last time I checked, it was $120 on Amazon. Um, I actually purchased mine from ThinkGeek because for some weird reason, um, ThinkGeek is selling it for 99 bucks in free shipping. So that was totally a cool deal. And at the time that I got it, they were actually doing a promotion that I got like 20% off. So it was you know even cheaper than that, which was neat. But, you know, so uh, estimate uh, about 100 bucks to get one of these. And to be honest, it's well worth it um, just because it's really cool. It's really screen accurate. It looks great on display in your living room or whatever. And you will have the most screen accurate Sonic at whatever convention you're at. So um, for what it is and how much they packed into this small thing and how much it does, totally five out of five for price point. So the uh, last thing that I'll mention, because this was a concern for me, is battery life. Um, especially, you know, if you're going to a convention for three days or whatever, you know, you're planning on being there for quite a long time each day. You don't want your Sonic to like die out in the middle of the day. Um, so uh, as I mentioned briefly before, when it's in FX mode, it only uses battery when you're actively um, doing something. So uh, for instance, I had this with me for three days at a convention and I didn't have to charge it once over the three days. It was totally fine. Um, and there is a little indicator, uh, this light, I believe when it's getting low will turn like an amber reddish color. I could be wrong. I'm not sure if it actually does that or not, but when you plug it into charge, um, the button will glow red as it's charging. And then when it's fully charged, it turns green. So that's kind of just like a nice little feature. Um, but yeah, so the battery lasts quite a long time uh, in FX mode, and um, I'm not really sure how long it lasts in control mode. I haven't really totally tested that out yet, but um, from what I can tell, it, it's pretty solid. And the fact that it's rechargeable and not like a watch battery that you have to replace is really awesome. So five out of five battery life for sure. All right, so that about does it for this review. Um, I hope it was helpful. And uh, please stay tuned to my channel for some more goodies coming down the pipe. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video on exactly how I modified this thing. Um, I also have a couple more Magnolia reviews coming up. Uh, I've got another tie and also uh, the Tenant glasses, which I just ordered. So I'm super excited to get those. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.